Okay, welcome back everyone. This is tutorial number four, which is the second part of the player interaction system. Uh, in this one, I'll show you how to allow the player to interact with anything, uh, including doors, switches, things like that. Uh, the same way that you can interact with the vehicles. So the first thing you want to do is create a master class, which we're going to expand from the actor. So just name it usable master blueprint. Inside this blueprint, you oh, inside this blueprint you want to create a use function. So custom event, name it use, and in the input add uh, an instigator so that the object knows what uh, you know fired up the use event so it'll be an object actor reference there we go so the master class is done um, then just for uh, test purposes I'll create a door so I'll create child blueprint class, name it door blueprint and then I'll import a door model right there create a very simple box collision right there Uh, then same as vehicles you need to add some tags to it oh hi Josh first one is going to be usable so that the player know this is a usable actor and not a vehicle second one is going to be the message you want to display when the player looks at the object uh, for example this one is a door so it'll be press F to use door something like that and then you wanna uh, override the use function from the master class and we're just gonna add a print string for now to show that it works Then in the player, we actually have. Wait for me to find it. There it is. Okay. So when the player press F, it checks if the look at actor contain vehicles. If it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. So what we'll do instead is copy this, paste it. So if it's not a vehicle, it's going to check does it contain the tag usable, which our door does. So plug that in here. And if it's true, then you want to cast the look at actor to our usable master class to be able to fire up the use event. Usable master. Yep. Something like that, and then fire up the use event with for the instigator actor a reference to self so that the door knows the player triggered this event. So if I just compile, place the door right in the middle of the street. Whoop. player should be able to interact with it. See, press F to use door, and if I press F, the print string fires up. If I press it again, 
it does it again. So instead of the print string, uh, we're going to use the move component to to fake some animations. Move component to uh, relative rotation that will be minus a hundred to open it and back to zero to close it. We want to ease it in and out and half a second is usually a good delay for it. So you want to add a flip-flop So first off, it starts closed, so you want to execute the one that opens it first. But before that, we'll add a sequence to both of these paths. So what the sequence is going to do is it's going to stop the motion from the other one and then trigger this motion. So if you use the door before it's finished its motion, it's not going to glitch out. Stop the motion, start the other one. And this should give us a door that we can open and close. Yep. And voila. You can implement pretty much anything you want in these class. You could add some bool variables, like does it start open, does it start closed, uh, set some different tags to whether it's open and closed to display a different message. For example, if the door is open, the message would be press F to close the door, stuff like this. Uh, Boolean values can also be used to uh, determine whether this door can be used by the player or if it needs to be used from another usable actor in the map. Uh, this is useful for doors that you only want to be able to open from a switch. And if you, for example, wanted a door that you can only open and then you can't close it anymore, then you just get rid of the flip-flop and this part. So it's going to open and then it's not going to do anything. Or you can add a do once right there. do once and from there you can implement more logic to be able to reset that gate uh, for example if the instigator is a switch then you reset that to be able to use it again uh, things like this and so yeah this is pretty much it no matter what you want to do you extend well you create a child blueprint from the master class and then set the tags here. Then you override the use function and do anything you want to do when the player interact with the actor. And this pretty much covers it. Uh, if you have no idea how the system works, it's probably because you didn't watch tutorial number three. Uh, the first part of this system was explained in the third one. Uh, this is part two. So in part one, we did this and the trace that lets you know uh, what actor you're looking at. So yeah, watch watch it, part three. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry for my voice. Uh, this is just a test I'm doing. Uh, I had decided to not voice over these tutorials. And then... Uh, damn, that Skype is going crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've had some comments of people asking to uh, just uh, at least try it. So this is, this is the results of it. Uh, I hope it, it's not too bad. And uh, yeah. As always, leave a like, comment, and if you want to have a tutorial on something, 
specific, uh, feel free to ask me. Because, uh, yeah, I'm going to run out of ideas for tutorial eventually. And, to, yeah, just so you know, tutorial number five is going to be about UMG. How to create pause menus, main menus, uh, graphical setting menus, things like this. And it should be out uh, fairly soon, actually. So, yeah, that's it. Bye-bye.